Hi folks, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Greg, this is All About Candles. Let's get right into it. I have a review for you today from Bath & Body Works. This is Salted Amber and Vetiver. And spoiler alert, I love, 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 love this candle. If you've been following me for a little while, you know how much I enjoy a good amber candle and I don't think I like this one quite as much as Dark Amber and Oud from Bath & Body Works, but it's a close runner up for sure. I enjoy that they put it out in this neutrals line. I really like the neutrals line packaging, you guys, especially these days when it comes to the candles from Bath & Body Works. For me personally, they either tend to be a major yay or a major ooh. And so I feel like the neutrals line is sometimes like the safest bet. I love so many of the candles that have come out in this line since they started it. I mean, right now I'm burning cardamom and vetiver, sugared lemon and spice, oh, a pink lavender and espresso. I love a pink lavender and espresso. But anyways, we're here to talk about Salted Amber and Vetiver. This is the new version that just came out. The scent notes on it are Salted Amber, Fresh Orange Flower, and Rich Vetiver. Mmm, I love this one. This is probably, this is the third time that I've burned this candle. I actually still have one that I picked up from last year. I think I liked the blue color a little bit more. But hey, bygones. Um, mm. So this candle had thick ropey wicks on it in both iterations. The new version had thick ropey wicks as well. And the fragrance, let me start with the fragrance because that is going to be the most positive part of this review. I love this fragrance, but I find that I find that the uh, vetiver note is kind of lost on me. Um, I don't pick up much of a vetiver. Maybe that is just because I have um, a sort of profile of what vetiver should smell like stuck in my head. And to me, it's something a little bit more like funky, grassy, mossy. And I don't really get that from this. What I get from this, I feel like it's a very mid-range candle. But what it does have is a really nice, nuanced, and quite earnest amber briny vibe to it. What I get first and foremost is the amber. And then, like I said, I, I feel like salted amber and vetiver is a little bit misleading. To me, this is salty, it's amber, and it's floral. So I feel like this is actually quite a beachy candle. Um, in terms of the sort of brininess and the floralness that it has and the amber in there as well. The amber is what gives it a little bit of a base and rounds out the fragrance quite nicely. It does run a touch into the perfumey category. However, I don't think it's like a fragrance that Bath & Body Works would release as a perfume because it's quite a sort of stern, earnest fragrance, right? As opposed to being sort of like playful and fun and musky and floral, this is quite an earnest vibe and I really enjoy it. Mm, like I said, this is about the third time that I've burned it. Um, I feel like last year's performed better um, in terms of strength, throw, and burn quality. I wish I could remember how it burned a little bit more specifically, um, but this year's version I think was a little bit weaker. I mean, it's not fair to compare them now after one has been like burned and toiled with. Um, but yeah, I, I, for some reason, I feel like last year's was more successful than this year's. That being said, I still did really, really enjoy it. I'd say that Strength and Throw was about a 6.5. I'd say a 6 or a 6.5 in my more open area. It did eventually become a bedroom candle, and I feel like in there, I was getting much more of a 7 out of it which to me is perfectly acceptable. I'm, I'm good with a seven. However, it got quite dark and murky towards the end there. 
Um, as you can see by the wax that's left over, it uh, the first uh, the first two thirds of the candle burned absolutely beautifully. I didn't have any issues with it at all. And then the last third, I looked down at it after it had only been burning for, oh, probably about an hour, an hour and a half. And the wax had gotten a little bit dark fairly quickly. Um, I, I believe I treated it just as usual, you know, I trimmed the wicks and I didn't have it going for too long. And I don't remember running into that problem with this version of it. I seem to remember this one burning really beautifully from top to bottom. But this one, yeah, the last third of it got into kind of shaky territory and I did see some soot coming up from it. And so it became an outdoors candle. And I actually, it had a bit of a presence outdoors on my patio as well. Like we could smell it out there when we were outside. Um, and so a little bit disappointing for the last third, but overall, I love this fragrance so much, I don't really mind. Um, I'm sure I'm going to repurchase it. This is a candle I would recommend, but I would obviously recommend spelling it in the store first if you can before you pick it up because it's not a fragrance that I think is for everybody. Um, oh, it's just very, it's very earnest yet beautiful. If If this candle was a person, I'd say that it was a very handsome woman. <laughs> Does that make any GD sense? <laughs> I hope so. Mmm. Salted amber and vetiver, everybody. I'm into it. I'm into it. I'm into it. Anywho, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you could like this video, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment. That would really mean the world to me. You can follow me on Instagram at allaboutcandles, and you can email me allaboutcandles at gmail.com. And until next time, my dear candle-loving friends, let's burn some candles and bitch about it. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Bye now.